Cheers everyone, it's Don with War. Uh, today I'm looking at the fixed tail oil plans. Put this into 109. Uh, as you can see, here's the plans for the tail wheel. Uh, I have this uh, attach, uh, spring attach plate completed. Um, and here you see where it's folded over. Uh, this will go up into the fuselage frame as you see here. Uh, we have these pieces. Uh, we're going to manufacture these pieces here in the shop on a video. And I just want to talk about this roughly. Uh, um, I had uh, an opportunity to bid on a mall tail wheel some years ago and thought this would be really cool to use. However, this thing is like, it's heavy, heavy. And... Uh, you know, it's one thing when you're building to put all your ideas in, but it's quite another thing uh, not to be conscious of the weight that you add with all the gee whiz stuff. Uh, you really have to be mindful uh, when you build an airplane of any type that, uh, that you monitor uh, what you're adding and or perhaps restrict what you want to add to keep the weight down. Um, you know, we need to be around 640, 660, somewhere around there, uh, uh, empty. Uh, there are guys that build warplanes and they're around a thousand. Uh, that's, in my opinion, way too heavy. It's gonna cause a thing to uh, fly like a brick or a freight train and uh, nobody wants to deal with that uh, off the ground. So what I did was I went to, uh, Aircraft Spruce found a uh, experimental builder's tail wheel. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this, uh, I, I hope that some of you are tail wheel pilots out there and uh, you'll understand as I explain this, but for both those of you who are not, uh, you want a tail wheel that, of course, here's our uh, where our rudder cables, as you see where my thumb and my index finger are. These are where the rudder cables uh, will connect to. Um, we uh, we want to make sure that the tail wheel uh, doesn't articulate 360 degrees. We want something that kind of locks it into place. Uh, but what I found here after I purchased it is this has a lock on it and when it turns a certain amount of degrees it will essentially just break over. And what I mean is it will it, it will turn um, a greater circle and that's I'm not sure how that's going to work out as I put this together I do so with the knowledge that I may have to turn this uh, 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 turn it around I may have to change this uh, quite simply because the ground handling characteristics may be uh, kind of rugged um, and, uh, you know, it just depends on how I feel with the control of it. Uh, this is a couple of hundred bucks. And, uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's lighter weight than the mall tail wheel. All right, so <clears throat> one of the thing, interesting things that you're going to run into is, is uh, you're going to buy essentially an automotive uh, spring. And uh, you're going to notice uh, from wherever you buy it from or you go to the junkyard and get it wherever, you're more than likely you're going to have to cut some holes in it and uh, cutting holes in uh, hardened steel such as these springs is uh, is rough so I'm going to pause the video we're going to go to the or actually this is going to be the end of the video we're going to walk over to the uh, the drill press and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experience drilling holes in there uh, see you here in just a minute 